Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is a short video, hopefully it'll be a little bit short, not condensed, you know, um, all about changing the rear shock absorbers on a 1993 Ford Courier Ute. Now, I have done some other work on this. We've reconditioned the front calipers, we've fitted a wheel cylinder at the back, we've adjusted the handbrake up, um, a few bits and pieces for the warrant of fitness. And whilst I was doing the rear brakes, I noticed, and we'll have a look in a minute, uh, some staining uh, on one of the rear shocks uh, when I was doing the warrant of fitness. And that's an indication that the seal, uh, the piston seal on that shock, is started to leak for whatever reason. There's loads of reasons why it can happen. And the oil from inside the shock has started to leak out, and it leaves a stain down the outside. Now, it's not officially a warrant of fitness failure unless... The shock actually isn't damping anymore, and that we do that with a bounce test, um, or there's an excessive leak where there's literally oil running down the outside of the shock and dripping onto the workshop floor. That will be classed as an excessive leak and it'll be a fail. So visually, looking at the shock from the outside on this particular vehicle, it's not a fail. If a garage shows you a shock absorber on your car and says this, something like that looks like this is a warrant of fitness failure, uh, provided it passes the bounce test, it's not a failure. I know this. Okay, so I've been down to uh, Repco and grabbed a couple of new shocks. Now these are gas shocks. Uh, you can tell that because they've got a, a clip holding them, holding them in tight for in the box. Uh, once you remove that clip, which uh, I can do now actually, um, then the shock under the pressure of the gas inside, look at that, will start to expand and it'll end up going full, full length. Um, gas shocks. They're, they're, they're better, uh, they tend to provide the same um, level of damping whether they're cold or, or up to operating temperature. Um, and they do provide a tiny amount of lift to the, sh to the chassis of the vehicle, but uh, it's not really a lot to be honest. Uh, four wheel drive guys, yeah fit gas shocks, get more height, but um, in reality it doesn't really work. All it tends to do is smash the mountings that the shock absorbers go to. Now this ute is not a four wheel drive, it's a, an old school rear wheel drive machine, normal low bed, not designed for off road at all, although Ben has been flying around the paddock a few times in it. Um, so ride height, totally irrelevant, doesn't matter, all we need to do is put some shocks on to keep the vehicle safe on the road. Um, with these particular shocks, the, the bushes, uh, I call this a piggyback bush, uh, the bushes need to be pressed into the eyes that don't come already fitted, so I'll show you how to do that once we've had a look at the vehicle. Okay, so you can see on the shock, this is the driver's side rear, this is the one that's really failed. Uh, you've got all this staining here on the, on the outside of the shock where the oil, and you can just see a bit of oil just there, look. Where the oil's been leaking out the seal that's just under here, and running down the outside of the shock and leaving this staining mark. And uh, although this isn't yet a warrant fail, it does mean that the shock's on the way out, and it needs to be replaced. So I'm going to pull that shock off now, together with the one on the left hand side and we'll inspect them in the workshop. Now getting these shocks off is really quite easy, it's just a, this is about the most basic kind of mounting you can get on shocks. Now with these threads, these bolts here, these threads are part of the chassis and they're not very easily uh, replaced. So I tend not to use rattle guns and stuff on these things because there's more chance of you damaging threads using a windy gun. So spanner or ratchet's always the best. It doesn't take long anyway to be honest, you don't save a lot of time by the time you've geared up with your airline and everything. Now once the, um, once the nut the spring washer and the main washer are off, just give the shock a bit of a wheel and you can just bring it off. Now the bushes on these old shocks are in two halves. Just take it off the bottom, there we go. And you can see 
on the new shock it's all one piece but on the old ones they're in two halves which is really common on the suzuki's as well the little suzuki sj410s they're all like that standard and you've got a washer at the back so make sure you grab that at the same time you don't want to lose that and the rear washer's got a much larger diameter in it and the other bush is off There we go, and there's no rear washer on the bottom one, it's all part of the spring base plate. Mistake, no spring washer on that one. this one we've got a washer as well so whoever's put this back together really doesn't know how it works both sides were different fantastic okay I'm back so we've got the dodgy shock this is the one that's got the oil leak and if we pull it full extension you can now quite clearly see there's oil residue, there you go, look, on the outside of that shock. Now, yeah, okay, it has failed, and it could have failed for a number of reasons. Inside here is a bush, and there's a piston rod. So this, is, this, is, this bit here is just a dust cover. Some shocks don't have that. They have a rubber gaiter instead, like on um, you know, off-road racing buggies and stuff. Uh, motorbikes sometimes have that. And there's a chrome piston rod, and as, as the shock compresses down, that piston rod goes down through the seal. And over time, dirt gets stuck to the piston rod, and it gets drawn down into uh, where the bush is and through the seal. And of course, the dirt damages the seal, and the, the actual bush wears as well. So as the bush wears, we get movement um, on the piston rod, between the piston rod and the main body and that movement again causes the seal to fail because the seal can't stay with the piston rod as it moves across eventually yeah, the movement's too much and if I clamp the bottom part of the shock in the vise and move the top part you hear that that's movement the piston rods clunking from one side to the other and that tells me that the bush at the top of that shock is worn out now these shocks are sealed units, they're not serviceable. Once they get worn out, you just throw them away, they're cheap enough. So, yeah, should I change the shock? Yes, definitely change the shock because A, the bush is worn, it's already started leaking oil, and it's gonna lose all its oil. At the moment, it's still working okay. It's still got a damping effect, you know. It's, it's providing a resistance to movement, which is what it's all about with a shock absorber. And yeah, it's good, it's working. And we've got the one here that isn't yet. Well, I'll say it isn't. Maybe it is. Let's have a look. Yeah. So you've got on here, again, just the start 
of some oil residue. So this one is also failed. Um, I say failed. It's, it's not failed a warrant, but it's uh, it is leaking oil, but it's not as bad as the one on the driver's side. These are scrap. So now it's time to fit the shiny new ones. Now the first job is to install these bushes, uh, and also to make sure that they're the right ones for the vehicle. And the critical part is the diameter in there. Now this is the old bush and this is the new bush. So we'll get the verniers. Where did Ben have the verniers? Hang on. So we can get the vernier calipers and it's only a rough because there's only a few different sizes out there but we can measure across there and okay there you go very very roughly 15.84 millimeters what's the new one so have a look yeah 16 just over 16 so they're gonna be all right I mean it's rubber at the end of the day and as we bolt up the the washer it'll compress and it'll squash it against the mount so quite happy that they're the right ones now as regards fitment I'll show you a little trick fitting the old style bushes the ones that are in two halves is really easy. You just put one on each side like that, you know, and it's done. And believe it or not, quite often uh, on the four wheel drives that we had on the fleet, I would reuse the bushes because the original um, manufacturer's bushes were of a far better quality than the aftermarket stuff. You know, you just don't quite know what you're going to get. But these feel pretty good, and we're going to fit those. So I'm going to show you how to fit one of these style bushes and there's a, there's a trick to it and we're going to use the vise. So your first job is get a little bit of CRC spray, no I'm not sponsored by them, and the bush. You can use WD-40 if you haven't got any of that, use a bit of engine oil, it doesn't matter. And we're just going to put a little bit around the bush. That's going to help it to, to go into the, into the, uh, the body of the shock and we'll do the same on the eye. Now, sometimes you can push these in by hand. Sometimes you need to use a vise. So we'll have a look. So there you go, look. I'm just going to push that in there. It feels like it's going to go. There we go. And that's as easy as that. That one, that one was quite simple. So we'll do this end now. Okay, so again, get your bush. Just cover them both in a bit of light oil. Give them a push, and in they go. Now, if it was a lot harder than that, then I would just use the vise to compress one in, and we'll do that uh, on the next one. Okay, so again, just give the bush a bit of a spray. You can even use soapy water, you know, you don't even have to use an oil. Just spray the actual body as well where it's gonna go. Just back off the vise a little bit. Enough. Yes, there we go. Okay, and then just pop it in the vise and use the vise as like a little mini press. And you just wind it in. How easy is that? And there you go. Done. Really quick, really easy. So that's both shocks, all four new bushes fitted, and we can head back to the vehicle and get these put on. See you outside. Okay, so this is the lower mount, the one on the spring base plate, and I'm just going to put a bit of copper paste on there, and that's going to help. Do a little bit on the threads as well. There we go, look. Right, so once you've put the copper paste on both the two mounts, uh, there's no washer on this one, but at the top, we're going to be putting the large diameter washer on the inside. It should be on. Uh, this slightly dish to these washers, and it should be the round side, the um, ooh, convex side of the washer, goes to the bush. So, convex, convex side of the washer, i.e. the side that's not dirty, goes on there like that. It's really important because then as the bush um, you know, gets squashed and spreads out under load, it's got a nice smooth surface to, to run on. It's got somewhere to go as well, which is important, otherwise things can get a bit too tight. So we're going to put the shock on at the top first. 
And then we've got something to push against. Because it's a gas shock, don't forget. And on the bottom, there we go. Okay. There we are, that's one end. Uh, two, perfect. Right, just some bolts now. Okay, so we've got a smaller inner diameter washer. Again, concave side to the bush. And then we're going to need a lock washer, spring clip washer, spring washer, spring washer. There you go, like that. Goes on next. And then a nut. Perfect. And we'll do the same at the top. Okay, so for the top then, smaller diameter dished washer on first with the dish facing the, the bush itself and then the spring washers next and then lastly let's pop the nut back on there we go cool now these are on a shouldered bolt which means that we can't over tighten the, uh, the bush. We can't over stress it, so you just tighten these up all the way until they're tight. And that means that this washer here is right up against the end of that shoulder. And I'll show you what I mean on the other shock when we fit that. Okay, that's that one. There we go. Let's tighten the bottom one up. So plenty of copper paste again on the mounting. More room under my jeeps. A bit cramped. I need a hoist. I buy a hoist. Hoists are good. Okay, I'll just do the top one. You don't need to watch me do this. Next one. Okay. Oh, washers. Don't forget the washers. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Now you don't need a washer on this side here, but you do need one at the top. I never fit with that one last time. Put it on the wrong way around. Awesome. So that's spare, that should be on there. Okay. Right. So you get the, you get the top on and then you've got something to push against. And then you get the bottom one on. Right, right, small diameter washers on there, look. Now we're missing the um, spring washers for this side, so I'll have to go and dig some out. Uh, again, dishwasher, the outside one goes in at the top. Let's go up there. Right, I'm gonna find some spring washers. I'll get this finished off and I'll see you back in the workshop. So there you go. That's how you fit a new set of rear shocks to a 1993 Ford Courier Ute. Pretty easy, a um, few little tips along the way, but now you know how to do it. Right, thanks for watching. My name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down the bottom. If you'd like to subscribe, then you'll get notifications when any new uh, uploads of videos go onto the YouTube channel. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.